Many of the problems we see with low vision come through lack of clarity or lack of resolution. Uh, with the video today, we're going to look at explaining how we can estimate the amount of magnification our patients may need. In low vision work, we have two choices. We can simply put a big box of magnifiers in front of our patients and allow them to choose the magnifier for themselves. Alternatively, we can start to calculate magnification need uh, and prescribe a magnifier. Now, hopefully as a professional, uh, you'll be hoping to go for option two, where we can look at guiding our patients and showing them the type of magnifier which is ideal for them. In fact, many of our patients will have several problems, and they may need several different magnifiers to address each of their problems. And they may be of different magnifying strengths for each of the problems too. So you'll need to look at each patient and each task for each patient as an individual experience. Estimating magnification need for each of these tasks and prescribing a magnifier accordingly. If we think about magnifiers as tools, um, a craftsman wouldn't simply use one tool, they have a box of tools using the appropriate tool for the job. This is exactly the same with magnifiers, where patients should have a range of different magnifiers which are appropriate for a range of different jobs or tasks. So what sort of things does magnification level depend on? Well, it depends on several things. One of the first things it depends on is the size of the thing that we're going to be looking at. Um, think about a few everyday things. The size of the label on a tin, the size of print in a book, uh, the size of print in a children's book, the size of print on a fine print in the contract. They vary quite markedly, and this will clearly affect how much magnification a patient may need. Another thing that will affect how much magnification a patient may need is whether they're looking to do a task very briefly, a task which we call a spot task, such as reading my watch or reading two words on a bottle to identify what's inside it, or whether it's going to be a sustained task, something we're going to do for longer, uh, reading a letter or use, reading a few paragraphs in a magazine. Tasks that we're going to do for longer will need more magnification. If we don't allow more magnification, the eyes will tire more quickly and become fatigued and the patients will very quickly stop being able to do that task. So we need to allow what we call an acuity reserve to allow them to be able to do the task for longer. If you don't quite understand an acuity reserve, try it for yourself. Reduce the size of the print on your computer screen until you can just see it and then try reading a large document. You'll find very quickly your eyes will get tired and very quickly you'll find you'll need a little bit of extra help. So for brief tasks, we often don't need to leave an acuity reserve. For longer tasks, we need to leave a little bit of extra space so the patient's eyes don't tire so quickly. There are many ways to calculate a rough idea of how much magnification our patient needs. Let's run through the simplest one. First, using your reading chart at 25 centimetres, measure the acuity of your patient. Now, 25 centimetres can be closer than you think, and you may need a ruler to check that get the distance correct. You may need a reading addition when testing older patients or patients with little or no accommodation. Then, we're going to record the best acuity, measure when the patient is really trying. This we call threshold acuity. Threshold acuity tells us what we can read when we're pushed. It's not what the patient can sustain. But using the goals that we set in our assessment of need, choose one of the problems we're going to try and solve. For example, the patient may have said that they want to be able to read the letters or post that comes through the door. Now, standard printed letters is often printed in font 12 on a computer, or N12 or P12 on that scale. You need to know what standard print is on the reading scale that you use. Now, what we have to do is compare the measured size of the reading text that the patient could manage with the size of the text that they want to be able to read. An estimate of the magnification needed is a simple ratio between these two numbers. Let me give you an example. If the patient can read font size 36 but wants to read size 12, we do a simple division sum. 36 divided by 12 gives us three times magnification. Now, for a brief spot task, this will be the end of the calculation. But as we mentioned earlier, for a longer sustained task, we need to leave an acuity reserve to reduce fatigue. The amount of acuity reserve is left to the practitioner, but normally we'd leave a reserve of about 2 to 1. And this means for a sustained task, we'd give them double the level of magnification to the spot task. So, if we look at our earlier example again, if they can read size font 36, but want to read size 12 in a sustained fashion, we do the simple division sum first. 
36 divided by 12 equals 3 times magnification. And to allow an acuity reserve, we double this answer, 3 times 2, so the total answer is 6 times magnification. Now this gives us an estimate of the magnification need for this patient, for this task. This doesn't give us the answer, but it gives us a very good starting point. Now, we've got several aids we can use to deliver this magnification, and over the course of the next few films, we'll show you some of these aids that are available. And we'll select them depending on the nature of the task at hand. Does the patient want their hands to be free so they can hold uh, the text? Is the task working distance important for the patient? Is training going to be needed? Is the patient going to be able to understand the training? Is the device quite complicated to use? Does the patient have a tremor? Will they be able to hold the magnifier and the task steady? Are the devices able to be used easily? Do they need to be, have batteries in them that need to be changed? Are they portable? Does the patient need a lighting source? Is the surface flat? How expensive is the device? Are they socially acceptable? Is our patient going to be using them? So we need to start thinking about some of these things when we start thinking about which devices we may want to use. Over the course of the next few films, we'll start to show you some devices and you can start to think how some of these devices may be more appropriate for some tasks compared with others. But I hope we've given you a brief understanding of how you can start to estimate how much magnification a patient may need for a particular task. But just remember, we need to start thinking about every task in isolation. So different magnifiers for different tasks. Uh, every patient and every task must be analysed and looked at separately.